The eyes of the world are watching. I can't tell you how bittersweet this day is for me. Bitter because JRC has been operating with impunity and continues to do so. To this day, torturing countless children in the name of treatment. Those children can only be left with unimaginable damage by the substitution of care and healing with terrifying acts of violence cloaked in the language of treatment. Sweet because the world is finally taking notice of those among us who hide behind the veil of a healer and claim to have the best interest of children in mind and at heart, but go on to use severe pain forcefully inflicted to achieve their goal of modifying their behavior. What passes for healing is torture. In practice, these practitioners violate ethical principles of care and human rights to achieve their end. Not only that, they operate lacking any scientific basis whatsoever. The best they produce is unscientific research and testimonials from parents and even former students. For those who don't know me, my name is Katherine Whitehead. I founded an organization called the Community Alliance for the Ethical Treatment of Youth with the intention of building a strong, supportive community for the empowerment of survivors like me who have been tortured and subjected to inhumane treatment while in residential care as children. One of our goals is to see a change to those laws and those policies and the general belief that allow this torture to continue. Ours is a diverse organization. We come from institutional care, placed as early as 1920 and as recent as 2012 from ages 16 to 94. Part of what we've done over the course of the years since our founding is attempting to document and capture the qualitative, the personal experience, and quantitative, the numbers of how many people formerly placed as children experienced their placement as harmful or traumatic. Through this work, I came across JRC in 2006, CAFTI, along with the Alliance for the Safe, Appropriate, and Therapeutic Use of Residential Treatment, posted an online survey. Over 700 people who had been formally institutionalized as children responded, of which one was a former JRC student, a survivor, and somehow managed, despite all of the trauma, the torture, was able to speak out. Like most torture victims, those abused as children, for every one that speaks out, there's another that cannot. We speak on their behalf today as well. Having been in contact with those placed in institutions, abused, degraded, and tortured, I believe the silence of most of the JRC uh, survivors to be revealing. And not revealing in the sense that they prove the point that no torture is going on, but rather so profoundly damaged to render them unable to speak out. Because what they learned at JRC, what they were told, is that torture is in their best interest. Their human life was so little that they must be tortured for the purpose of achieving normalcy. Fully betrayed by their families and by the doctors the families entrusted with their care. Torture is healing. Who are they to trust if not the program operators, the places intended, sold to, the state, their parents, as places of treatment, of healing? We must stop this epidemic of suffering in silence and come to acknowledge the reality for many, for many that suffer daily, the ramifications of their experience in residential care. For a lifetime, they will experience nightmares, anxiety, PTSD, betrayed by society, by physicians, by psychologists, by program operators that prescribe torture. Can you imagine a more damaging practice 
than forcing a child or anyone under your complete control, utterly powerless, and demanding they adopt your reality, your standards of behavior, and be shocked until they do so. What is a developing child left with when even their own beliefs and thoughts, their natural responses, their behavioral and emotional manifestations of their internal world are tortured away? I tell you what is left, a shell of a person. On behalf of Cafferty members and our brothers and sisters housed at JRC and any other program that permits breaking down the will of a child and permits their torture, using best interest language as though torture can ever be called care, as survivors recognize, even if it's decades later, the fog of trauma has worn off, that we did not deserve torture, degradation as treatment or care. Because someone operates on the bizarre belief that some members of society, children, those stigmatized are not entitled to equal protections. But we know torture is morally reprehensible. Dr. Israel, residential programs, take heed. The children you have tortured have grown up. And they're here to hold you accountable and to make sure that no other child lives through what we've lived through. And we will not stop until we are sure that no other program, no other child is subjected to torture as treatment. It is time for our nation to wake up and take action, for lawmakers to hold their programs accountable, and for those who torture to be held criminally responsible for their acts. We call on the Department of Justice to take action against the Judge Rodenberg Center and hold all those torturers accountable for their actions. And of lawmakers, by first denouncing and ensuring inhumane treatment and torture as treatment is made unlawful. We must pass appropriate regulations of oversight, federal oversight. We must ratify the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And at this time, we must let Massachusetts know that the eyes of the world are watching and that we will not stop and we will not rest until Massachusetts becomes that beacon of hope for our nation and the example that other states must look to. Other states that house facilities with no regulation, with no oversight, that is not community inclusive, does not promote and support social inclusion, and educational inclusion. The time has come for these institutions to be met with the same level of force and the same level of fury as those attacks upon our dignity. It is time for this torture to end and for our lawmakers to take heed. Stop the torture of our children and stop housing these facilities of torture.